Okay, welcome back to the channel. It's been almost four months, five months since the last time I did a video. I think I did a video in October. Been busy at work doing a bunch of things and also just kind of needed a break from creating content. I had been pushing out a lot. But now I'm ready to get back into it. And out of all the things that I'm doing something about, it's actually Angular with Ionic Framework, which is a surprise. What I'm doing is a basic, for lack of a better word, to-do app using Angular Fire, Ionic Framework, and that's about it. I am not using standalone mode. I'll do another video with standalone mode. And also the interesting thing that I found with Angular Fire, if you scroll down here, when you first look at the documentation, they're kind of showing the whole new way to do everything, but they do support this compatibility mode. So you can basically keep your API pretty much the same way it was up to V6 and get all the capabilities of the newer version of Firebase. So it is pretty awesome. So for those of you who have used Firebase recently, this shouldn't be anything new, but uh, for those who just wanted to check back in to see how things are working with this new compatibility API, I'm just gonna kind of walk through the code. The code already exists, code will be uploaded. You can look at it. This is really just a quick walkthrough for those who want it. Um, if you like the Angular content, please let me know and I'll do some more. Like I said, I'll probably am going to do a standalone version and I'm going to do one with the modular Firebase API, which is very similar to what you get if you just use a plain JavaScript API. So for those who don't know, Angular Fire really just wraps full for Angular users. Um, so for me, basically, that means observables. I am not an observables guy. I don't particularly care for them. I'm certain there's a need for them, but it's not for me. But I will cover them here in this video. So please make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get to the video. So first, let's take a quick look at the app. I have basic login set up so I can log in. You cannot create an account. I just have basic login. You can add create account as an exercise for yourself. And then when you log in, I have this little add button here. You click an add button. A modal dialogue is presented. You type a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. Description. You save it and thing gets added. You can edit it. This is a thing. Edit. Edited. Confirm. And you can see the change. They have full modal support, so I can open the modal, I can cancel, nothing happens, and then of course I can delete the item, and then I can log out and my UI refreshes. That is pretty much what the application does. So let's quickly walk through the code. Once again, so I am here in my app module. As I said, the code will be provided, and in the code I kind of walk through how I set up the project a little bit, but just to let you know, this is a blank Ionic Angular project, then I, do ng add angular fire and we get angular fire added up in here and then we're pretty much ready to fly in our environments directory where are we app blah, blah, blah. environments i've set up my firebase configuration inside here i'm not going to show you because i actually am using this project for a couple of other things and i don't want to tear it down but you can see here i've imported the modules that i'm using the angular fire module once again, remember, notice the compat on the end. Compat auth, compat firestore, compat angular fire, compat. Initialize the app with the Firebase information, as you can see there. And then we're pretty much up and running. So a couple of things that I did to make this a little bit more like a realistic application is, although I did just shove everything into one page, I did kind of break out things into components. So I have a separate component that let me log back in, put some data in here. Confirm. Confirm. So this is a component that's rendering the list and I'm showing how to emit events for my um, click on my button to edit and click on my button to delete. I've also moved the modal that you see popping up here. So on edit, this is a modal component that I've created and the same modal is utilized for creating and adding. So there's some interesting code in there, how to manage all that. What else do I got that's a little special? And the biggest thing is here, I created a separate service, which is where I've moved all of the Firebase related code. So all of the Firebase code, except for authentication, I did not move that, but all the Firebase code is here inside of this service. So let's just kind of start with what we have going on in the service. So 
Um, I'm getting access to, well, so in my constructor, I'm getting access to my fire, Angular Fire Store. This damn type thing popping up is annoying. Angular Fire Store and Angular Fire Auth here. Into, into the constructor, inside my constructor, I set up a reference to my things collection so I can use it throughout my application. And then here for my loading things. Yes, I know I'm using value changes and that pulls back all the data all the time. You can optimize this by using snapshots. Maybe in a more complex example, I will show you how to use snapshots. But here's how I make a call to get the collection of everything that is in my things collection. And I'm passing this ID field here so that I can make sure I get the ID field back in the observable that's returned. Here's how I delete a thing. I pass in the ID, delete, pretty straightforward. Here's how I save a brand new thing. Pass in the fields that I need using some types here to make sure I pass the right data in. Um, I'm adding this thing, leveraging my reference I've created on constructor. And then I'm using a timestamp to set the times as opposed to a new date. A new date is going to use the date of your machine. Timestamp is going to use the time on the server. So that's why I use timestamps here. Updating a thing. So for updates, of course, you need the ID and the fields you can update, name and description. Once again, using specific types to support that. Leveraging my collection, getting the document, updating the document. And once again, using the timestamp from Firebase to set the update and not my local time. And then last but not least, getting a thing, uh, pass an ID, and then, you know, get a document snapshot back as an observable of the specific ID, ID that was specified. So that's the thing service. Let's hop into the home page A, so we can just first talk about how I have, um, how I'm pulling off the kind of auth thing. So when I log out, so let's look at the templates. You can probably explain it better from the template. Module, home page, here we are, template. So what we're doing is, well, let's, let's start with the home page. So what we're doing is inside this, inside my constructor, I'm getting access to Angular Fire auth. In my thing service, all that really matters now is the auth and then Inside my ng on init, I am subscribing to a user. Probably could use on off state change, but went with something different. So we subscribe to the user. And then if we have a user, if we don't, I mean, if user is not null, then I set is authenticated to true. I save the user, dump the user email just so I can see it. And I set loading to false. So these are the key variables that I'm, and then also if I have a user, I call my service, I load my things. I have it in my observable. So these are the key variables, this authenticated, this user loading and things that I'm using in my template. So remember, keep all those in your head. So now I'm back to my template. So first of all, I need to just choose whether or not to display this log out user button. So the first thing I do is if I'm not loading, so if I'm loading, I ignore the whole thing. If I'm not loading, and the user is authenticated, then we show the logout button up here in the end. Otherwise we do nothing. And down for the main content, how we toggle between this login card and the actual list information, I have a couple of if statements using templates. So we start at the top here, and what we're doing is we're saying, if I'm loading, show the spinner. Otherwise, show this auth loaded template. And this auth loaded template is what gets displayed after my subscription comes back and lets me know whether or not I have a user. So once that's set, then I come here and I say, well, if I'm not authenticated, then show all this login information. Else, show the auth view template. So let's hop down to the auth view template. And here's the auth view template that does shows you the welcome. So now if I have a user, you can see I have this component that I have created called app thing list and I pass in my things observable. So this is how I get my list of things to render. I am listening for events on an edit and event on a delete. And on an edit, I will call handle update thing and I'll get passed a payload. And on delete, I'll call handle delete thing and that gets passed to payload. Let's take a quick look at my list with things. 
list of listing and models. I have my types defined that I'm using. Let's close that. Listings. Let's take a look at the component first to see what's going on. So login. So here's a here's it displayed. We have the name, we have a description. So first of all, I am an ng4, and what I'm doing is I'm taking my things, I'm iterating through my things and rendering them. Let's get some more space here on the screen. See if I can do a split screen. Things, 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 the list component. Okay, so first let's take a look at what I'm passing in as inputs. So I'm getting my things as an input, and then for, for my outputs, I have this event emitter for my delete and for my edit. Okay, so I render my things, do this iteration, and then I render my name and my description. And then on my buttons, I have my delete emitter. So if I click the delete button, I emit a delete event and I pass the add item ID, which then gets handled in my home page. If I click the edit, once again, I pass the emit a edit event and I pass the ID. And that's kind of what is going on here. So let's close this out and go back to my home page. So back on my home page, was quickly we covered the login user. When the login button kick clicked it clicked, we take the information from these fields, email and password. Log out user, we just logged user out. So the handle add thing, so when I click on this, it calls this open modal function. And we can see the open modal function has got a lot going on. So let's spend some time talking about that. Well, first I create my modal. I pass in a component that I want to use, and then I pass in the data that needs to get passed in. And as you can see, on the add new thing, there's no data passed to the modal, because I don't have anything to display. And the way the modal gets data back is on dismiss, it gets a response from the modal. And dun, dun, dun. the handle add thing shows the modal. And then let's find the code. So when I dismiss the modal, so I, I got to open my modal again, apologies. Things model, things modal. So actually, I apologize, I haven't covered the modal. Modal very similar to the things where I'm passing in data to be displayed, but on create, there's no data, but I'm also emitting events for confirm and cancel. Also, I track what type of modal it is that are we in the add state or in the update state? And all that is determined based on the data that gets passed in. So if I have a data ID, then I know I'm updating and I set the modal data to the data that I got passed in. Otherwise, I know I'm adding and my modal data gets emptied out. So, but after I type all this stuff in and I say confirm, click the confirm button, what we do is, well, we're emitting this event, which I don't really believe I need to do. I apologize because I, I had done this modal a couple ways. But the important part is what's happening down here is this, when I dismiss the controller, I pass this confirm role, so I know what I'm doing, it's a confirmation. And then I pass the data that I want back. So this tells me what type it is. And so in this example, it's add. And then here's the appropriate data that's coming along from the model modal. On cancel, I just pass the cancel role, pass the type, and then my data is null. You get the same behavior on cancel, irregardless of the type, but just for to keep it standard, I, I, I kept it all in there. But now let's go back to and look at what happens with the modal controller. So when the modal controller comes back, I peel off all the data. So I get the response data object that comes back, but that response data object has my modal type in it, and then it has all my data that's coming back. So the first thing I do is I check to see if I got a confirmation. If I didn't get a confirmation, I don't really care. I just cancel and I'm gone. If I did get a confirmation, right, then I need to look and see what type of confirmation I got. So I know whether or not I add the data, which then I call my service. I pass the data that I got back. Or if it's update, I call my service and I pass the data that, it's got, that I got uh, passed back. 
Um, in this case, you can see I'm going to get an ID passed back. In this case, for save thing, it's just a create input thing, create thing, create input, and there's no ID being passed along. So that's how we're handling this modal for confirmation and for add and for delete. Uh, I think I covered the edit and delete. If you go back to them inside of my thing component, yeah, they're just emitting these events, handle edit, handle delete. Let's take a look at that. Here we go back to home page and where is my, so here's the handle delete thing. We get the ID pass back. We call our service and delete. And then the handle edits a little bit more complicated, which is actually it's called the handle update. Because the first thing I need to do is I need to get the thing. So I use the ID that got passed back. Then I get that data and I pass that data into my open modal call. And so that data gets passed into my open modal call. Data gets passed to my modal component. And then you can see when I click on it, it's using that data to populate the UI. It's changed the title. It's giving you some additional information. And that's pretty much the flow of it. So like I said, I didn't want to type this all up and have you walk through it all. I just wanted to you know, build some code. I needed it to refresh my memory on Angular Fire and um, Angular and get back in the swing of creating some video content. So this is what I've done. Like I said, I'll include the link to all the source code in the video description. Please give me your thoughts and feedback. Let me know if you are interested in seeing this written in standalone mode and also if you are interested in seeing it written in the basically non-compat uh, version of Angular Fire. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Take care. Bye.